What is up down and sideways all you beautiful individuals? Welcome back. It's another epic of League on Live for for part dos of our preseason power rankings in the LEC. Yes, it's way too early. Yes, all these rosters are mostly just on paper and we haven't seen a single game yet, which is why it's great when we completely miss the mark on all these, right? There's no better time than to make these big statements on these LEC squads than exactly as you said, with the limited information that you got, the absolute zero gameplay <laughs> together that you're seeing. But this is what we're rolling with. Feeling confident with these rosters confirmed or confirmed with very reputable sources. That's why you can make this type of very early look, way too early look into the LEC. We've already done that back half, that back five. It's time to jump into the juiciest part, that top five. Yeah, we enter the big boys with the familiar face. It's a bit of a flip-flop. Koi is gone. The return of Rogue and budget cuts across the board. Somehow, they end up coming into this year with what looks like two upgrades on paper when you got Zoellis, who's a former ERL MVP, one of the most, probably the most hyped up prospect in the support role from the regional leagues. And Marcoon coming in for Malrang. I think everyone could see Malrang was on a downward trajectory the last year plus. So to me, Across the board, Rogue looks better than they did last year, and they got the better logo back. Yes, the logo is back. I was going to say, I was all in favor of the experiment, of the partnership of, of Koi and everything else, understanding the things behind the scenes of why we're not seeing that return again this year. Seeing that Rogue logo back again, and I wasn't all on board about going just back to Rogue type of situation, it did make me feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside, like a nice glass, a, a nice cup of hot cocoa type of thing. Seeing Marcoon in the jungle as the other one has got me feeling a little bit more happy than just a nice cup of hot cocoa. Because as you mentioned, Malrang was certainly a player that I think, you know, I had, had doubts about coming into the position, into the role with the team, did find success, did find a peak in performance. And then, as you mentioned, last year was really a downward trajectory, downward slope for him individually, as well as the team in that performance and that aspect of what they required from him. Having Marcoon step in, that instant presence, that instant level of talent that he is going to bring to that role to this team is an upgrade without question to me. And I'm, I'm excited to see this rookie phenom support paired up with comp. Hopefully these guys are getting back to that comp and Trimby level where they were legitimately in the conversation for best bot lane in EU. Yeah, you got to remember that, you know, and again, yes, it is part of that duo and a big part, and I don't want it forgotten, is Trimby's, comp, you know, contribution to that duo. But looking at comp, you got to remember, this is an ADC that, you know, just a year, year and a half ago, you had the other ADCs from the LCK and the LPL even going, oh my, who is this guy? He's popping off. He can do some damage. So yes, it is absolutely a team with Rogue where you can look through, you can see the potential, you can see the potential for the team to grow and be something more. I think it is a very conservative place to slot them just into that top five of the LEC. And definitely, again, a team that can climb higher and a quick, unwavering loyalty support shout out to Larson for now being on this team for almost five years like he's one of the most uh been on the same team for the longest of anyone in the LEC a uh, maybe conservative maybe hopium spot for the number four team it depends on how you're feeling about the old trio of G2 boys team heretics I know some people might see this reunion and say let's go those are favorites to win the whole thing and some of them might say did you see perks last year on Vitality? These guys are washed up. But I'll tell you, Yankos was the furthest thing from washed up. And Wonder, with an actual practice regimen and offseason behind him, I'm excited for the solo lanes of Heretics. I think both of the perspectives are right about this team, about someone like perks as a specific player. When you're talking about last year, you could say, did you see him last year? And you could take it both directions because absolutely at various times, I think, you know, really through the spring split, you could see Perks really carry the team, showcase that individual talent that he's got, that Luca the Bazooka Perks showing up in the mid lane, dishing out that damage. 
And on the other side of that coin, you can look at almost the entirety of the year and specifically the way summer ended for this Vitality team, that there just wasn't anything in the tank, that this wasn't the experiment. There was too much too for fun. There wasn't enough focus. All these things, and individually, you can place a lot of that onto someone like Perks. And so that's where you enter into this situation with Heretics, where I feel like both sides are more than valid because this player has shown us that it is still there. It's still on the table to access that level of talent, of skill at the very tippity top of the European ladder is somewhere Perks can find himself. But at the same time, if we are not getting that level of Perks, I think things can quickly fall apart for this Heretics team because them contesting, competing at that ultimate level really does depend on having that level of output from perks in the middle. And let's, I think people are sleeping on what we got out of the more recent XG2 member in Flacket last year. And you look at this Heretics roster as a whole, they were pretty damn close to making Worlds that impressive run at the end. How many times were we saying that Flacket is such a reliable carry at the time VTO's been amazing? If only they had a top laner. So even if Wonder is reaching a fraction of what he was getting on Fnatic and G2, Evie was such a weak link during out the entire year, I'm hard pressed to possibly see Wonder being a downgrade from that. Right, and yeah, I think you can have that conversation maybe if you're looking at the mid lane about the whole Perks and Viteo swap situation type of thing. That one in the top lane, Evie Wonder, that is without question that upgrade for this Heretics team, you know, at the very peak and at the consistency level, I think on both ones, you're getting that check mark, adding Wonder there. And as you mentioned, Flacket in the bottom lane, I think that is something that has gone under the radar throughout this LEC offseason is that we're getting another split with him, more development and where he's leaving off from last year and how much he's grown how much he had shown us that yes this is that player that you know there's reasons why g2 believed in you to be that guy to take that next type of step forward what we saw those signs of hope if you signed on to that one you saw it again last year you saw it expanded upon with this heretics roster hoping that's the case here in 2024 we've seen both comp and crowny leave vitality and have incredible runs on different teams if upset, Bo, Perks, throw in Kaiser, have a bounce back year, then we're officially reaching TSM levels of suppression machine for Vitality if these guys pop off somewhere else. That's, uh, it feels unfair to put them into that type of boat, but you're right. You listed out the names. You're listing out the results that come afterwards. There might be something funky going on with those Vitality Super Throw beings. LeBrov in too. Yeah, absolutely throw LeBrov into that one. Mr. BDS support, yes, you can throw him into that category. The way you slice it, I think right now looking at this Heretics team, there is without question upgrades to the firepower that you had last year. And that firepower, I think it's going to be firing a whole lot more often than you did get any of the fireworks from this Heretic squad last year, building up on a relatively stable, successful first year in the LEC. Talking about Labrov, beautiful transition segue into the number three spot. The four seed from the world championship team, BDS, four fifths returning. Obviously, Crowny not being on the team is uh, a few question mark pinks out of me. Don't think that was at all the main concern, especially replacing him with the Korean import in ICE, who I know has spent time in EU playing in the ERLs. He was on Live Sandbox Challenger. It feels like teams are just now really taking the shot to get a Berserker or a Noah on some of these more underdeveloped uh, LCK opportunities. But for Crowley? Yeah, it is that question. Like, I think you're absolutely hit the nail on the head talking about that. It is one of these situations of trying to find that next berserker, trying to get one of these young Korean prodigies that maybe has been overlooked or passed over from the regular system in the LCK. Get your opportunity in one of these other regions. Pop off. We've got you signed. We've got the loyalty, all that type of deal. That does seem to be more so the angle they're going for that one. Looking at the other angles here, though, and there are other angles on this BDS team that need addressing. Number one of them is, of course, Adam in the top side. Can't talk about BDS without talking about Adam and the job that he does. His gods, champions, Garen, Olaf, Darius, throw him right down there. That's what you're dealing with in the top side. I don't think that's going to be changing. I don't expect, you know, an all of a sudden expanded an additional champion rolling into that champion pool. 
Renekton, whatever type of thing, sure. But this is going to be a player that even with that understood, I think it's about the other members of this BDS team because what it wasn't really about Adam on those things. It was about everybody else looking lost if Adam isn't on those things. And so that's where I'm looking at this BDS team. You had an identity. You knew what to do when Adam was on that God's duty and he was popping off and being disruptive, being that bad Adam all the way across the rip. But when that wasn't the case, this BDS team really fell apart and didn't have anybody else other than a few moments from Crown Shot stepping up and leading the way. That's going to be my question for them heading into this next year. And the reason they are still top three is Crowny did underperform at Worlds, no question. The strong suits were other angles, either Nuke in some of these games or specifically Shea and Adam, as you mentioned. And this new, obviously we have no idea what the meta is going to be in 2024, but with all these void grubs spawn in early, you know there's going to be more fights around that top side. So this is how you give more urgency to the actual laning phase in that top lane. And a team like BDS, definitely going to benefit from that. And I think that when you talk about these top jungle type of synergies and duos that you can have in the LEC, you're looking at a pretty darn strong one with BDS, with Adam and Sheo as those two positions. And as you mentioned, the Void Grubs, a little bit of extra attention towards that top side of the river. Adam causing those disruptions. He loves to make his trips down the mid lane. He doesn't even need to go as far now. He just needs to stop at the pit, grab some grubs, and he's back up in that top side being a menace. Lebrov is going to be another big factor, of course, with Ice and down in the bottom lane and everything that goes on there. But we know Lebrov, his value is later on. It's in these team fights, how he can maneuver, how he positions, how he contributes in that type of way is going to be a big factor. I'm still on that LeBrov train. I think that he's still going to be climbing up. And if BDS can ride that, can ride a couple of other positive things with this roster, they are going to be one of these top teams contending in the LEC. Yeah, we'll really see what uh, level LeBrov is at when he's partnered with a new AD carry. Uh, and if they're at the same level, then yeah, LeBrov's the guy to be highlighted in that bot lane. Number two spot, the theme continues of these top three teams from last year, making just... Minor roster changes, but roster changes that leave you pondering a little bit. Fnatic, Trimby was such a key cog and the catalyst to the turnaround on the year for Fnatic. A bit shocking for him, number one, not to be returning, and number two, being replaced from Jun coming over uh, from Korea. Obviously, him being paired with Noah, they're obviously going to have that built-in synergy, both uh, being from there. Got to imagine that was the main reason behind this move, but still feel like Fnatic should be, if they're in that summer form, top two, top three. I don't think myself or any other Fnatic fan, for that matter, should accept a reason other than that for why this is going down in the bottom lane and why this is the move for Fnatic. Yes, we are seeing this come through, and I want to take you all the way back to the beginning of the year last year and all the struggles, all the dark, the dark times for this Fnatic team where a lot of people didn't want to see Humanoid and Razor continue with them. And here we are today with their extended contracts with the team and everything else. So we are in this new era, a continued era, really, for Fnatic. Uh, we step into them, but we've got them at number two in this power rankings heading into the next year of the LEC. Where is that power coming from? Well, of course, it is those two. Razor and Humanoid in that mid-jungle duo always looking at them and i think the really you saw those signs back to the true nature of what these players are and what level of skill they can contribute at is what we saw throughout that summer split. and listen when you count oscar Renan's injury when he came in the situation he came in remember he had one of the worst debut weeks of all time in the lec people were ready to write this dude's career done and dusted after three games and we were only really seeing these glimpses in the summer playoffs and even at Worlds, going up against Kbin, going up against the Shy, we saw this guy's growth and development. And I'm excited for him to become a focal point of this roster now as he heads into his second year with the team. There's a lot of reasons to be excited about that. And one of the biggest ones for me just really is the stepping stone that, you know, base platform that he's going to be able to get with a proper off season behind him with this full, you know, you're integrated in the whole fanatic system, everything like that, the organization, all the practice, all the support, everything is going to be there for you throughout this off season to get that right step forward in that starting lane, starting position in the top side. 
I've got a lot of reasons to be happy and excited about Oscar and continuing with this fanatic team. And I think that it is that upward trend for him individually. And then you go to the bottom. The bottom lane is going to be this big thing to talk about, of course, with Noah, with Jun stepping in. Noah, tons of reasons to be expecting that it is going to be this next level of performance. You go that comparison, right? Berserker, C9, what happened that next year really emerges into the scene, shows us that insane power potential. And then that next year was taking it to that next level, that next notch up, dialing it up that next level and really showing that power. And Noah's got the capabilities to do that really is going to be the question on whether he gels with Jun as that support, whether they are the right, you know, a symbiotic type of par partnership in that bottom lane to get it popping up. At least Fnatic, hopefully, shouldn't be shooting themselves in the foot with some two and seven winter split yes. performances, yes. not making it to top eight. So it is pure desperation when those summer splits do roll around. Number one on the list, I think everybody knew because they completely dominated the whole year and did not make any roster changes. G2 Esports, were you expecting them to make some moves after the disappointing run at Worlds? Uh, I was on the fence really about it because, of course, I'll give you a fresh reminder, NRG, the LCS number one seed quickly dispatching of G2 Esports and, of course, G2 had that amazing 2-0 start to the event and then unable to convert to find that next win to push them into the the quarterfinal stage of this world's event that we had looking at g2 you had to say yes there were maybe opportunities that you could look at to make a change but at the same time you were so good all the way through the le scene there was only one way to slice it up with this squad and say you know what you had a bad run you had a bad run of either luck, individual performances, group performance, communication, all of that. At the end of the day, we got to move by it to get to 2024. And how do we do that? Refocus, recommit to this group. You have Yike as that young jungler stepping in. Now the sophomore season, everybody coming back hungry again to reprove for that redemption run, revenge run. I'm willing to sign on to that one for G2. It still feels like they were the best Western team at the event, had the highest ceiling, just had a bad day against NRG, and let's be honest, three opportunities in best ofs to advance to the next round, but I mean, Gen G and BLG being two out of those three matchups, uh, nothing easy to get through for them, but can they keep that motivation? Because they dominated for so long, you heard Romaine and other members of the organization, I mean, straight up leaking their scrims, showing how much effort they put in a year. If they're going to MSI again, these same five guys, I'd start worrying about burnout because of this three split long season. It's so unbelievably cumbersome. I just hope that there's teams actually challenging G2 in the LEC to keep them motivated. I think that's going to be a big part of it, right? Number one is going to be an actual some type of you know, uh, to to go back into Toronto history, a little bit of load management, Kawhi Leonard type of territory. Look, if you're not into any traditional sports, that's going to be absolute gibberish to you, but ignore it. Taking that time off, taking a little bit of space away from the game can be some good things, even in this type of schedule. Or on the other side, if you've got an extremely competitive LEC where you are getting that push from the, every, from the number two, number three type of teams, assuming G2 would be in that top spot, yeah, that can keep you invested. That can keep you caring, can keep you happy playing this game, playing, practicing, all these type of things when you have that nice competitive fire at your feet. Something that occasionally G2 has maybe not had to the type of temperature that the rest of the LEC would like to deliver to. So when you break these up into tiers, we already did a bit of the tier listing for the bottom five squads, the potential surprises slot rogue into a dark horse spot where they could go for a deep run then you add this new tier of contenders and that's your two to three two to four area heretics fanatic bds to me that's where if they level up you wouldn't be shocked if they took home a title in the split yeah, I think they're in that zone where you know what you're going to need to see more than just one week out of, of you know of this performance of that type of level showing you that they are that championship contender to make that push for that type of team. I think right now any you know you 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 really can't throw G2 down there because they have to be that top dog. Top they got to be in a tier in their own for sure. I think without question they take that one for the LEC, 
But right now, looking at these contenders, the way that we've talked about all these teams, it might just be the hopium copium in me, but I can see the angles for all of them to be the LEC champion. Heck, at least in one out of the three splits that you got in the LEC. Come well, on. Like these, this two to four range, you have BDS and Fnatic, who again, changed one player and both of them had glimpses where they were in the finals you know a couple games away from winning the entire split and then heretics on paper you have a big upgrade in the top lane and maybe a side grade in the mid lane obviously there's big fluctuation on what level perks can be at but if they if any of those two to four teams are a little bit better than you expect, then absolutely they could be taking home the title, especially if G2 is still riding a bit of that world's funk. <laughs> yeah, I could see that going on and down. I think people need to remember just how close a team like BDS was to capturing Up that to spring zero. championship. And, and by all means, yes, there is the disappointment of, of that on half, but they should have had it. They should have got it, that type of thing. I think this is going to be a BDS team that will at some point in these splits show that type of level of power. Really hoping this season comes through for the LEC. I hope that we get this level of competition for G2 at that very top end. Keep it interesting. Keep it hot and spicy, the LEC. The one way to ramp it up sounds like they're getting a brand new venue to be playing at for 2024 with some in-streaming booths. Maybe that's enough to spice it up and not feel like you're in the same dull LEC studio in Berlin over and over and over. Uh, you know what? It's a wonderful studio, but it's been a wonderful studio for, I think, a couple too many years. It has you become can't a little stale. You can back-to-back finals in there. That's the, certainly a problem. The way things went through, how much it was relied upon throughout the COVID era is definitely a big thing in, in the safety of it. The other factors, of course, just we've seen it so many times. We've seen it involved in MSI events. We've seen it at the World's events that were in Europe. I've seen it too it's many a, times. Bring us the fresh venue, as you mentioned, in streaming boost. I think that's going to be another angle to bring in a couple of extra additional uh, talent to the group to, to show us the broadcasting, to have these different type of streams. Bring it on. New year, new name, new venue for the EMEA. But that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.